Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this Redux course. This course is for you if you are just learning Redux from scratch or also if you need a refresh. I am the author of a React Redux tutorial for beginners. I am just recording the same exact course in Italian and I told uh, it would be nice to record a bunch of video in English too. Uh, now let's uh, take a look at the, the history of Redux. Redux is a state management library for JavaScript application. It was created uh, after Flux. So in uh, 2014 we have uh, Flux, which is a JavaScript library for state management uh, created by the team at Facebook. Now, uh, I have not so much experience about, with Flux, but it, it, was, it was quite a complex library. So uh, the team uh, were looking at ways uh, to simplify state management. Now, uh, as far as I can tell, the problem that Facebook had was to keep the chat application in sync between many uh, tabs in the browser and that led to the creation of uh, this uh, state management libraries. Flux uh, was quite complex, so uh, Dan Abramo and Andrew Clark in uh, um, 2015 came up with Redux, which is a slimmed down version of Flux. Before uh, moving forward, uh, it is worth spending a couple of minutes talking about the state. What is the state in a web application? If you think about it, the state is everywhere. If a model is closed or opened, that is state. If an element is clicked, maybe we want to notify uh, the state and change it accordingly. Uh, the visible data, what the users can see is a state too. So for example, if we fetch something from an API that is a state that we must render to the user. Uh, if the user did X or closed something or something else uh, that is a state change, could be a state change and in that case we can we can dispatch an action in Redux. Uh, if we fetch some data from an API and the data error, errors out or the data is ready that is a state too. So there are many more moving parts in a JavaScript application, in a front-end application. I'm not saying that for any uh, thing that happens in the application, you might want to uh, dispatch an action or handle that with Redux. But for the larger part, everything that lives inside a front-end application could fit into Redux. Now, uh, Redux uh, has pros and cons. It is universal. It could be used with vanilla JavaScript, so not front-end frameworks. It can be used with React, with Vue, even if uh, Vue has Vuex, but could fit into Vue too. It can be used with Angular. Uh, and now in this, uh, in the first episodes of this course, we will see Redux with vanilla JavaScript, no React, no uh, nothing. Um, other nice, th nice things in Redux are the time travel and the developer tooling, as we will see later. Some people say that Redux is dead, placed by GraphQL um, and state management with GraphQL and Apollo. Uh, I don't think that Redux is dead and uh, Mark Erickson will agree with me. Uh, but the thing is that in the first iterations uh, Redux was a bit verbose. Now uh, it also depends on how do you structure your application but with naming actions, uh, action creators, middlewares, selectors, it is true that Redux could go a bit convoluted. The learning curve of Redux is a bit steep and most people will agree with me. Now let's take a look at the architecture. I think it is important to make a mental model of Redux before going into the actual code. Now uh, a typical Redux application has a, a, the UI, so the front-end, HTML and JavaScript, and there is the store on the other side. 
now this tour is like the redux brain uh, it is in charge for orchestrating uh, actions uh, reducers and so on now the store is made of a function called reducer as a convention uh, the main reducer is called re reducer there could be many reducers and you can uh, combine them together in this course we will see uh, the most simple example with a single reducer the reducer is a function uh, that produces the state of the application uh, that means it takes the state as a parameter as we will see later and uh, if there are no state changes it must return this initial state unaltered uh, as we will see later another thing to keep in mind is immutability because when you change the state in redux um, you can modify the initial state you can uh, mutate the initial state directly because uh, in the end it is just a javascript object but as we will see it is considered bad practice and it completely breaks immutability and the development tool so it breaks the time traveling feature of redux so this state comes from a reducer in redux and the reducer is what makes the store now when the interface wants to change the state has to send out an action dispatch and it is like uh, an envelope it is like a letter so when you want to uh, modify the state you have to dispatch an action with a function that is called dispatch and we will see that function later now anytime there is a state change in redux the store can update the interface if the interface uh, choose to uh, subscribe to these state changes and that means the store will notify the ui with the subscribe function so in the end it is just a matter of dispatching actions and receiving um, updates from the store uh, the state uh, comes from the reducer and the reducer is what makes the store now let's see how to create a Redux store. In the next lesson, we will see how to create the store in practice. Now, for now, keep in mind that uh, you can import the create store function from uh, Redux, and you can uh, create a store by passing in a re reducer. Now, once you create this store, you get also these three main Redux methods. There is dispatch, uh, which is used for dispatching an action inside the store and when you dispatch an action uh, it is like sending out a message to the store uh, like for example button clicked model closed and once you dispatch uh, dispatch the action a reducer takes care of that action and changes the state accordingly another function is subscribe that you can use to listen for state changes and as we will see later subscribe takes a callback that will update the UI with the relevant information. Uh, get state is the last function of this group and uh, is used for uh, checking what property of the state changed because um, the initial state is just a JavaScript object with properties and you can check what property changed uh, inside the state and maybe uh, display something to the user and so on. Uh, that's all for this first lesson. Uh, we introduced Redux, we saw the architecture of Redux, we saw that there are reducers, there is a state, uh, there is this store, and we also saw these uh, three functions. Uh, to recap, Redux was born in 2015 by Dan Abramov and Andrew Clark to simplify what Flux was doing at the time. In the next lesson, we'll start to see Redux in practice with a simple example with vanilla JavaScript and HTML. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for the next episode and see you next time!